Oh, you better be joking. Negan, Lucille, I knew I had to make a pretty strong first impression. That is my best Negan impression. Take it or leave it. What's happening my fellow geeks and geek cats? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a convention safe Lucille replica bat. So it's pretty safe to say that rules and regulations in terms of what you can and cannot bring into conventions these days is pretty strong. Things have changed a lot. People aren't allowed to bring in as many props and weapons as they like even though they are safe. The rules have tightened quite a bit and I totally understand that. So today's episode is to emulate the Lucille prop that is seen in The Walking Dead that is sported by Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Negan, we're going to make this look as realistic as possible. So the human eye, it looks like a heavy baseball bat with jagged barbed wire. And as an added bonus, I'm going to show you guys how to put some Glenn brains on there. So the base bat that I'm actually going to be using is the same base bat that I used for my Casey Jones bat. The bat itself is made by Heroes Edge. This cost me $48 from Zing, that's 48 Australian dollars. So this is a foam bat with what I'm guessing is a metal armature on the inside, is the perfect proportion, is the perfect weight, is the perfect everything. People in the shop that were seeing me buying this came up and touched it and they realized it was foam and they freaked out. So that is going to be the base bat. Baseball bat, base bat, tongue twister. Now in terms of the barbed wire, this is some cheap barbed wire I picked up off eBay. This is $6 a bag, I have two bags. As you can see here, it's pretty rusty looking, so we are gonna be coating it with a chrome spray paint to get it back to that traditional barbed wire look, whilst also giving it a bit of a darker kind of weathered look. Now in terms of that little circular insignia on the bat itself, this is something I just printed up uh, off the computer. I literally just drew this in the paint program on my computer, printed it out. So the weathering is gonna be a combination of brown and black shoe polish. Once that stage is complete, we're gonna sand it back just to make sure we pick up all that lovely wood grain. Then of course we can get to wrapping the barbed wire around it and then stage one is pretty much complete. Then we can move on to the bonus round and I can show you guys how to make realistic looking blood and brains and just it's gonna be really nasty. This is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time and it's something some of you have suggested I do numerous times. So here it is, we're finally doing it. So with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so the first step in this build is emulating this circular piece of insignia that you see right here. So like I mentioned in my intro, this was printed off my computer. I just did this in the paint program that I have. Um, it literally took like, you know, all but two minutes to do. So I cut out the pieces in between the actual black portion itself. What we're gonna do is spray some spray adhesive on the back of these two pieces. We're then gonna lay down the outer half first and then the inner half second, just to make sure it all lines up and corresponds with how this piece looks right here. I'm then gonna grab some flat black from Model Masters and dab it around the exposed area of bat with this stencil. And theoretically, when I peel these two pieces off, we should have a perfect emulation of that piece right there. And this is all in theory.
Okay, so after the second coat of brown shoe polish, we're gonna grab some sandpaper and start to sand the shoe polish back. So it kind of gets rid of that glossy look and also sands it back to an almost wood-like grain, which is what we want. As you can see right there, there's just a massive difference already from this section as opposed to this section. So we're gonna repeat this process throughout the whole back um, we're not going to touch the circular section as of yet. So after sandpapering the whole bat, we're then going to go over it with the black shoe polish and then sandpaper it back, including the uh, insignia here, and just chipping away at certain parts just so it blends in with the rest of the, uh, the, the wood grain. Okay, so as you can see, after some nice layering of shoe polish and sanding it all back, we've got a nice wood grain on this foam bat. See right there, you just squeeze it and it just squishes and yet it looks like an actual heavy wooden bat. So the next step is to get the barbed wire and spray paint it with the chrome spray paint just to bring it back from that rustic look. All right, geeks, now that the barbed wire has fully dried, it's time to start mounting it on the top of the bat itself. So the first piece of barbed wire that I'm actually gonna attach is the top piece that rests on the top of the bat itself. From what I've seen on the screen use bat, um, it, there definitely is a piece of barbed wire that comes on the top here. So what I'm gonna do is actually secure it in place with some Loctite. I'm just gonna put a dab on here and a dab on the bat itself um, and I'm actually gonna go to the contour of the mold seam itself. So I'm gonna hold that down in place and then hold it down like so, as tight as I can. And then I'm gonna grab these staples here that I showed you guys before. These are galvanized staples. I'm just gonna embed them into the foam itself and just push in as hard as you can into the foam. And there you go, I'm just gonna trim off this excess bit here, but there we go, the first piece of barbed wire has been laid down, and then the exact same method is gonna apply for the rest of the barbed wire that goes around the rest of the bat. Now, I do have to be very strategic because I wanna follow uh, the guidelines of the screen use prop. I do know there is some wire that goes across the circular insignia here. There is no actual barbed like pieces going across here, but more so just some of the wire here. So I do believe there are two wires that actually cross around here, whilst the rest is just an absolute just storm of barbed wire. All right, Keek, stage one is complete. I'm very happy with how this is looking so far. It looks deadly, it looks jagged, but it is completely and utterly harmless, completely convention safe. So I'm gonna let this fully dry overnight, and then tomorrow we are gonna get to the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the brainy stuff. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna be mixing certain elements together to put brains all over here and make it look as realistic and as fresh as possible the next day. All right, geeks, it is time to make some brainy goodness to put all over this lovely piece. So, so the first step is we're gonna be making some brain chunks and some skin tissue and skin flaps. So the basis that we're gonna be using is brush-on rubber latex. Now, the beauty part about the one that I have 
it's starting to dry up and coagulate, which is perfect. So I'm also gonna be using uh, some resin tint. This is a red resin tint that actually coincides with the latex. It actually dries with it perfectly. So the first step is, I'm just gonna get a skewer. This is, these are just cheap barbecue skewers that I actually use to mix up my resin a lot. I'm just gonna throw some down onto this spare piece of MDF, like so, and spread it out. We're then gonna grab the red tint and with a separate skewer, we're just gonna start to lay some out into the latex itself. I'm just gonna start to mix it up. Now you just sort of want an uneven consistency. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate one half and move it over like so, and we're gonna spread it out like that. And we're gonna keep this half over here like this, just a bit unorganized. This half over here, we're just gonna mix with some plain latex. And what this is gonna emulate is almost like fatty tissue. So we're gonna leave this to dry, and when it dries, we're gonna be peeling it off the MDF here, and then we're gonna be tearing it up into shreds. That's what we're gonna be mixing into the resin uh, just to emulate brain chunks. Okay, now that we've fully let the latex piece dry, we can start to peel it away from the MDF. As you can see right there, where I mixed in just the plain latex, it kind of gives that marbling like meat and kind of like fatty matter. It's just, it really is disgusting. Now, obviously we're not gonna be using all of this, but you know, it's just, it's giving us a lot to work with. So I'm just ripping it up in this sort of organic chunks um, just so I can kind of get a feel for what's going to work best on the bat. Now these pieces here were just actual chunks of uh, just plain latex and the way they've dried, I'll just zoom in to show you guys, it just looks disgusting. It just looks like, like white meat. It's really gross. I'm actually getting grossed out the more I do this. And yet, you know me, usually I'm very desensitized to, uh, to horror movies and everything, but this is just going to look realistic and gnarly. Not to mention, we're going to be putting chunks of black hair on the bat, um, you know, from Glenn. Poor Glenn. The next step is to add some brainy goodness and some bloody goodness onto the bat itself. So I've selected all the pieces of latex that I want to use as bits of brain. So what we're going to do is glue them strategically onto certain parts of the bat using some Loctite. Once that has dried, I'm then going to go in with some epoxy cast. So it's a part A, part B, 100 to 50 mix ratio. I'm then going to tint it with some food coloring, some red food coloring. This gives the most accurate representation of blood, uh, like fresh blood in this case. So this stuff, you got about half an hour's working time, so we can let it sit in the cup for a little bit. Um, and then what we're gonna do is start pouring it over the bat whilst rotating it. And I've also got some black hair from uh, just some off cut from a, a, a black wig that I would lying around to emulate Glenn's hair. Poor Glenn. So that is pretty much it, Geeks. There's nothing to it, but it's just gonna look so disgusting and so gnarly. And this stuff dries a nice gloss by the end, so it's just gonna look nice and fresh. Once that's fully dried, we are gonna call it a day, Geeks. We are gonna have our convention-safe Negan Bat Replica. Look who rocked up. Oh, how are you, how are you doing that? <laughs> hey man. Hello. It's Rui. Hello. It's, it's Rui. You remember me? It's Rui. How, how far are you zooming in? Because I'm going to go right in on that beautiful Portuguese face. Oh, hold on. <laughs> now you're so Portuguese. I'm doing that. I'm doing this for Pirate Nightwing. Oh, oh yeah. The, the, yep. the curl. <laughs>
it's when they fall down like that. It's all flappy. <coughs> oh. <laughs> okay, that was a real gag. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so I'm very happy with this result so far. I've got to let it drip dry, literally. As you can see right there. How you holding up, man? I don't like it. You know, <laughs> that means I've done my job right. Look at that, that is just gnarly. Ugh. And there you have it, geeks. With a few easy steps, we have ourselves a convention safe Lucille bat replica that you can take into conventions. And the beauty part about the epoxy cast is it actually flexes, as I demonstrated before. So it's gonna flex with that lovely foam bat. This is probably one of the most disgusting custom collectibles I have ever done, as I demonstrated with Rui. Rui just couldn't handle it, the poor bugger. It is pretty nasty. Now I'm actually gonna be offering a small run of these puppies on my Etsy store. So I'm probably going to do about 10 of these. Uh, they're going to be limited edition. So once they're gone, they're gone. So I will leave the link down below for my Etsy sales page where you can find these. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I'm going to have some more custom collectibles coming to you in the next couple of weeks based around Avengers Infinity War. I've got part five in the Captain Without a Country coming up next. So guys, wherever you are in the world, I hope you have yourselves a cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. Ugh, God. Ugh.